In this video, I'll share with you 14 useful phrasal verbs that native speakers use all the time. So if you want to speak English better, but you don't have much time to practice, I suggest you watch this video till the end. Have you ever tried out your English in conversation, but you couldn't work out what the other person was saying? But then you stumbled upon a good dictionary to help you puzzle out these confusing phrasal verbs? If you didn't understand some of these phrasal verbs, don't worry because I'll share with you 14 common phrasal verbs that'll help you understand native speakers much better. So what are phrasal verbs? Phrasal verbs are two or three part verbs like this, to work out, to try something on. The first part here is a usual verb like work. And the second part is a preposition like in, on, or out. It doesn't matter. But the second part is what makes a phrasal verb a phrasal verb. Phrasal verbs are a type of verb that they're extremely common in the English language, especially in conversation. So if you want to develop your English speaking skills for work or travel, or communication in general. One way to do it is to learn phrasal verbs. So I hope that these 14 phrasal verbs that I'll teach you today will help you understand native speakers much better. So the first phrasal verb I'm going to share with you today is one of my favorite. To sleep in. I love to sleep. And who doesn't? And especially on the weekend. I love to sleep as late as possible on the weekend. I usually wake up at 6 a.m. But on the weekend, I sleep in until 8 30. And that's what I mean by sleep in. On the weekend, I sleep in until 8.30 a.m., meaning I stay in bed until 8.30. And number two, to figure out. Can you take a look at this sentence? I took the wrong bus and I couldn't figure out where I was. Can you guess what it means in this sentence? To figure out is to investigate or think something through in order to understand it. You might figure out through a little online search that your school teacher moved to Alaska and became a salmon fisherman. You can figure out the answer to a tricky math problem using a calculator. And you can figure out how old you were when you first traveled to another country by looking at your photographs and asking your parents. This informal phrase is really useful whether you're finding the solution for a big problem or simply understand something small. Like when you figure out which kind of treat your dog likes best. To figure out is usually followed by what, when, and where. Let's get a few examples. She couldn't figure out what to do. He couldn't figure out where he put his phone. We need to figure out how to solve this problem. We just need to figure out what he's after. And number three, to add up. Let's take a look at this example. His story didn't add up. I think he wasn't telling the truth. Can you guess what add up means from that context? It means that the story wasn't logical and he was lying. If you go to work very late and your manager is asking you, why were you late? And you tell them that you got in an accident on a bus and it got on fire and you were trying to help people get out of the bus, but you look too nice for someone who got in a car accident. Your manager will think that your story doesn't add up and you're lying. Native speakers usually use this term in a negative context. Like here in this sentence, his story didn't add up. I think he wasn't telling the truth. It didn't add up. It didn't make sense. It doesn't add up. No, it's weird, right? And number four, to heat up. I like this phrasal verb because I use it a lot. Every day at lunchtime, I take my lunch out of the refrigerator and I heat up my lunch. So can you guess what heat up means? It has the verb heat in it and it means to make something hotter. There are different ways to make something hotter. For example, you can use an oven or a microwave, but heat up means that you're making food hot and usually that food is leftovers. Leftovers is food that you've already cooked and put in the fridge. Now you're taking that food out of the fridge and you're making it hot again. Heat up some more water. And number five, to cut off. The first time I heard this phrasal verb, I was very confused because I used to know that to cut off is used when you cut off your hair. But to cut something off means to interrupt someone when they're talking. She tried to tell her teacher her excuse, but she cut her off mid-sentence. To cut someone off mid-sentence means to interrupt someone when they're in the middle of a conversation or a sentence. And mid is short for middle. In most cultures, it's very rude to cut someone off mid-sentence, but I know that it can be okay in some countries, so please let me know in the comments, is it rude to cut someone off in your country? I am. All right, I'm going to cut you off. And number six, to cut down. The doctor told her to cut down on sugar, but she loves sweets. Can you guess what the doctor asked? 
Did the doctor ask her to stop eating sugar? Or did he ask her to eat it less? You're right. The doctor asked her to eat less sugar. If you cut down on something, it means that you do it less and less. If you're trying to cut down on coffee, it means that you're trying to have less coffee. Maybe instead of five cups of coffee a day, you're just having two. You cut down on greasy foods and chocolate. And number six, to get along. Well, usually native speakers use with in the end of this phrasal verb. Mark doesn't get along with his older brother. They disagree on everything. Can you guess what this phrasal verb means in this context? To get along with someone is to have a friendly relationship with someone. Maybe you share the same opinions or the same values or you just like each other. If you don't get along with someone, it means that you don't have a good relationship with that person. You get along with your parents? And number seven, to fill in. I missed the meeting. Can someone fill me in, please? To fill someone in or to fill someone in on something means to provide information. Usually this is some spoken information. So if you missed an important meeting and you want to know what happened, this is the perfect phrasal verb to use. Iris, look after Cap, fill him in on what's going on, all right? And number eight, to fill out. When you go to the doctor's office, you need to fill out a lot of paperwork. To fill out means that you're giving information, but it's more written. It's not spoken. If it's spoken, we use to fill in, but here we're talking about paperwork, so it's written. And that's why you use fill out in this context. So at the doctor's office, the secretary might ask you, can you please fill out these forms? Actually, I'd like to fill out an application. And number nine, to bear with. Can you bear with me for a second, please? You use bear with me when you're trying to ask someone to be patient with you. What? Well, usually when you're trying to do something else. That's a polite way to say, wait, please. So this phrasal verb is perfect to use at work and you don't forget to say please in the end. Bear with me, please. Sorry. Just bear with me, detective. Uh... And number 10, look forward to. If you look forward to something, it means that you feel happy and excited about something. You can say, for example, I look forward to my holiday or I look forward to my birthday. It means that you're happy and excited about your holiday or your birthday. Look forward to is also used at the end of a formal letter to say you hope to hear from or see someone soon or that you expect something from this person. So in the end of a formal email, for example, you can say, I look forward to hearing from you. It means that you're expecting an answer from that person you're messaging. I look forward to our partnership. And number 11, bring up. Imagine you're chatting with your friends about school and suddenly you mention a new video game you love. That's bringing up a new topic. It's like saying, hey, let's talk about something different now. When you bring up something, you're starting a fresh conversation within the main one. You can bring up your hobbies, a situation at home, or a funny story, anything that adds a fun twist to your talk. So to bring up is like being the DJ of the conversation, playing a new song to keep things interesting. You cannot bring up a conversation topic if neither of you is interested. And number 12, to run into. Imagine this, you're walking around town, minding your own business, and suddenly you see a friend or someone you know. That's running into someone. It's like a fun surprise you didn't plan for. So when you say, I ran into my neighbor at the store, it means that you unexpectedly met them while shopping. It's like destiny brought you together for a quick chat. Interestingly, however, I did run into Annie again. And the last phrasal verb is to look up to. Imagine you have someone in your life, maybe a superhero, a family member, or a teacher who you think is amazing. When you look up to them, it means that you really respect and admire them. It's like they're a shining star guiding you on your path. And you wanna be as cool and smart as she is. It's like having a goal to be just like that person because you think they are fantastic. Remember, to look up to is like having a special bond with someone you really like. It's like having a mentor in life, someone you want to learn from and be inspired by. I needed someone to look up to. So keep looking up to those wonderful people who make you want to be your best self. Keep rocking your English journey and I'll catch you up in the next video.